everyone, thanks for joining us. This is the Signature TV News Update. I am Damilola Abudu. In the headlines, Sultan of Sokoto announces 2021 Idel for three day. Reactions trail attempts to boggle the residence of the Chief of Staff to President Buhari. Imo Governor sacks 20 commissioners, dissolves cabinet. And now the details. The President General of the Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs and Sultan of Sokoto, His Eminence Alaji Mohammed Sahad Abubakar, has announced 2021 Idel Fitri Day. This is contained in a statement released on Tuesday by Professor Salisu Sheu, Deputy Secretary General, Nigerian Supreme Council for Islamic Affairs. According to the statement, the Sultan declared Thursday, May 13, 2021, as the first day of Shawal, day of Idel Fitri. The presidency on Monday said there was an attempt to burgle the residence of Professor Ibrahim Gambari, the chief of staff to President Muhammad Buhari. The attempted attack on Gambari's residence comes amid increasing security challenges across the country. Many Nigerians have been reacting to the attempted attack. Signature TV correspondent Nasiru Usman was on the streets of Abuja. If these hoodlums you are talking about now, they were able to penetrate inside Azor Rock, whether they succeeded or they didn't succeed, then you know that uh, we, are, we are in trouble. If Azor Rock cannot be safe to the point where these hoodlums will enter, then what happens to ordinary Nigerians, like I and you, that is moving around the street? I was shocked. I was really shocked when I heard that uh, Asorok is, is not even safe. If that is the case, that means everyone has to pack and run away from this country now. So I was very, very shocked. And uh, when we voted this government, we hope that we believe, our belief before then, 2014, is that this government will come on board and wipe away our tears. One by one is the hunger, insecurity, whatsoever, all the things that the Amaya that has been happening in previous governments. But instead of us to see the changes, oh, what are we seeing? And I think our government have to just have to wake up and do the right thing. Our security architects has completely broken down. There must be an overhauling. There must be an, I mean, there must be a rejecting of our systems so that Nigeria can go back again, and then this engine can, be, can, can, can begin to, to work again as it used to be in those days. If the NISU is not done, the way things are going in Nigeria, uh, let us not uh, be pessimistic. Let's be positive. We just hope the government do the NISU. Because I find it difficult to believe that some entities can just come up and be stronger than the government. With all the architecture, with all the security architecture, with all the resources at the disposal of our leaders to ensure that we are safe. It's unfortunate that we are find ourselves in this situation and um, I don't know what we'll do differently. When you look at it on the other side, you begin to sense that there is conspiracy somewhere. Because if there is no conspiracy, when our soldiers go out, when they go out on a foreign mission, we know their performance. After one year in office, the Imo State Governor Op. Uzodima has announced the dissolution of the State Executive Council. The Commissioner for Information and Strategy, Declan Emilumba, disclosed this on Wednesday, shortly after the State Executive Council meeting in Oweri. He said the reason for the dissolution was to reject the activities of the state government after one year in office. He added that out of the 28 commissioners, only eight commissioners were left to carry on with the activities. The senator representing Imo West, Richard Zokorocha, has said injustice and pervasive poverty were responsible for the anger and frustration against the President Muhammadu Buhari led administration. Okorocha, who is also a member of the ruling All Progressives Congress, APC, 
stayed at this while hosting less privileged Nigerian Muslims at his office in Abuja on Tuesday. The former Imo state governor said the APC-led federal government must take steps to address injustice, tackle poverty, in order to restore calm. The lawmaker encouraged Nigerians not to despair to the point of giving up on the country, but rather be optimistic that a new Nigeria will soon emerge. A police officer has been killed in a fight with a civilian while breaking the Ramadan fast. The incident occurred in Damba community in the Gusau local government area of Zamfara state. It was alleged that the police officer accused the local resident, Mukta Alege, of staring at him in an unpleasant manner while eating while other Muslims were fasting. According to the sources, the police officer became enraged and demanded that Mukta explain why he was staring at him in that manner. He believed he was tactically mocking him for eating when it was not yet time to break the fast. The call began to beat Mukta in an effort to defend himself. Mukta hit him which, he led, which led to his death. The spokesperson of the Zamfara State Police Command, Shehu Mohammed, has confirmed the incident. He said the command is still gathering facts on the incident and will come out with its position on the matter. Mukta Alege, who killed the policeman, was, has been arrested and is in police custody undergoing interrogation. On the foreign scene, Uganda's Yuweri Museveni has been sworn in in his sixth term as president as police surrounded the home of Bobby Wine, his main opposition rival, who decried the inauguration as a sham. Museveni, who won re-election in, in January, despite widespread reports of irregularities, took the host of office on Wednesday at a ceremony in the capital, Kampala, that was broadcast on national television and attended by several African heads of state and other foreign dignitaries. The 76-year-old wearing a dark blue suit and his trademark wide-brimmed hat promised to pay tribute to true allegiance to the country he has ruled non-stop since taking power as a rebel leader in 1986. Vice President Yemi Yoshibajo represented Nigeria at the ceremony, accompanied by the Minister of State for Foreign Affairs, Ambassador Zubairu Dada, and the Special Advisor on Economic Matters to the President, Ambassador Adeyemi Dikpeolu. For entertainment stories, let's join Blessing Adejo. This is Signature TV the Hawk. Breaking the news. Following the news. Analyzing the news. 247 round the clock. All on the go. Signature TV the Hawk. News in your pocket hello and welcome to entertainment news it's always a pleasure to have you join me on entertainment segment i am blessing at the job nollywood actress and director genevieve naji will star in an audio adaptation of the broadway musical fella which will premiere on the clubhouse app this weekend the audio adaptation on clubhouse termed fella 1020 will portray the ancestors movement in the context of Fela Kuti's legacy. Fela's 1020 director and producer, Funa Maduka, spoke. The 1020 signifies the date NSAS protesters were reportedly shot at the Lekki toll gate on October 10, 2020. Naji revealed in a statement that she is honored to be part of the production. A video snippet has surfaced online, which shows iconic singer David Doe cautioning his second child, Haley, against trekking. After a party, the little girl wanted to show off her dancing skills to onlookers as she assumed the trekking position. Her superstar father hurriedly stopped her by tapping her lightly on his shoulder. However, the film singer action has drawn several reactions on social media, especially on Twitter. Baba GD Blunt via his handle tweeted that the singer has a double standard. He said Davido can watch other people's daughter twerk, but will not allow his daughter to do the same. Abdul Kadri also shared similar views with Blunt, adding that a father's love is priceless. I am Soji lauded the singer's parenting skills via his handle. 
noting that some parents would just laugh off the little girl's action. Hamburg also gave the singer thumbs up for his parenting skills as he tweeted, Good job at David Doe. You raised your child as you love to see her. It is never your duty to teach other children but your parents. Nigeria legendary singer and rapper Olorunwajo Fasesi, popularly known as South Sutan, is currently battling with a horrible disease known as throat cancer. He is currently in the United States of America receiving treatment. It was gathered that the artist has commenced chemotherapy in one of the hospitals in the country. Nigerians, alongside popular celebrities, took to social media to express unbelief and also pray for his quick recovery. And that's it on entertainment segment. I remain your anchor, blessing editor. Bye for now. In sports, Chelsea is preparing a lucrative new contract for Thomas Tuchel to reward the German for his phenomenal start at Stamford Bridge, according to reports. Tuchel has led a remarkable recovery since replacing Frank Lampard in January, taking the blows from ninth in the Premier League to fourth. Equally impressive is how he had stared the West Londoners to the finals of the FA Cup and Champions League. While Tuchel has just over one year remaining on his 18-month contract, he is understood to be entitled to an extension if he hits certain targets. Nonetheless, Stanford Bridge chief are keen to hand him an entirely new deal with improved terms. Before we end the news, here's a recap of our top stories. So a town of Sokoto has declared Thursday, May 13, 2021 as Idelfi Tree Day. Nigerians have reacted to the attempt to boggle the residence of the Chief of Staff to the President, Professor Ibrahim Gambari. Those that spoke to Signature TV expressed worry at the development. After one year in office, the Imo State Governor Hope Huzodima sacked 20 commissioners and dissolved his cabinet. Please do well to stay safe, maintain physical and social distance, and wear your face mask while going about your daily activities. That's the Signature TV News update. On behalf of my producer, Anita Eze, I am Damilola Abudu. Thanks for watching.